I'm uh, William Smith. I'm an MD by training. I actually taught medical school for the University of Kansas. And I always was taught and actually believed that uh, anything that dealt with manual or manipulative therapies was suspect. You really ought to avoid those treatments because they'll kill you. And, you know, don't go there. And so um, for somebody that said they'd never do workers' comp medicine, I ended up working for industry after I left the university and uh, took a job at Boeing as a staff physician. And then was moved up to Seattle to do regional work, and uh, uh, I, I took over the state of Alaska, the yanking and pulling and twisting. It's very physically demanding. Um, it was just an absolutely amazing experience, and so um, this really is the holy grail of soft tissue and dealing with musculoskeletal. And, you know, just if you think of all the neurologic issues that we see, all the diabetics with their diabetic neuropathy, painful neuropathies, you know, probably the cylinders. I mean, those things are all treatable nowadays. All the stuff, fibromyalgia, that we see, well, we don't want to see, you know. You know and all that stuff is now fixable. We really can make a huge difference in people's lives. And so, on Father's Day, I'd like to thank Stephen for being the father of that day. Well, this changed my life, actually. And I said, how, on the same, I was really happy about this. On the same moment, I was kind of concerned because this is not only a gift, it's also a burden and you cannot just do something else now when you see this work you can what what can you do and the this is not the easy way the easy way is getting shots prescribing ibuprofen or sending somebody to surgery this is the easy way everybody does this and you can buy a new car with it and you can buy a, a house and life life is easy but with this life is difficult and you have to do it and so I came back, and in my uh, hospital part, I, I when I met Steve, I was in emergency medicine, which probably made him give him even more credibility to me because all the things he told me about the emergency room and his experience were absolutely my experience, and that the patients tell me everything, but I don't understand it. They always end up with the same infusion, whatever they tell me. So it's a waste of time to ask them. <laughs> and so uh, th that was my point in 1996. I, I stopped asking people, actually. I said, did you fall? And if they said yes, I said, it's next door, a trauma department. If not, they get the same infusion. And I said, I didn't study medicine for this. This, this can't be true. So things changed in 1997 when I was with Steve in, uh, in Bangor, Maine. And and since then, I use FDM exclusively in my in my osteopathic practice. I, I am a, in hospital based. I'm an anesthesiologist in my and intensivist, and uh, I have a private practice for for manipulative therapy. And uh, this is exclusively FDM. I, I can't do anything else since. This is obviously a new threat that we need to address because if we're going to. We want to promote the fashion distortion model, and we want to protect it. It's a gift given to you, but do you want it badly enough that we can that we can make this become what we want it to become? Why we're doing this is because we respect them. And I was mentioning to Gene a few moments ago that every patient that comes into our office is not just a person that walks in there. They're somebody's wife, or somebody's husband, or somebody's mother somebody's father, or somebody's child. They're a burden in your office for how long? 10 minutes? 20 minutes? Half an hour? Maybe an hour? At a difficult patient, you might spend a half an hour, an hour. That's your burden. But when you send them out the door, that's that family's burden. For how long? Five years? 10 years? The rest of their lives? We have, we have a gift as Georg said, and we have a burden. And that burden is every person that comes into our office, their problem becomes our problem. I say that almost every day in my office, my patients say, what, what can I do? Not me, me, what, what can they do? What can I do? Should I exercise? Should I do this? I say, your problem is now my problem. I'm taking that on my shoulders. And that's the philosophy that I want all of you to have both with your patients and with the political social part of the FDM. When Georg, when I asked Georg to lecture in Vienna, he said no. 
And the reason he said no initially was he said, I'm not ready for that. I don't feel comfortable doing that. And I told him, I said, look, if you're not going to do anything you're not comfortable with, we're never going to get anywhere. I'm going to ask each and every one of you to do things you're uncomfortable with. That's how we're going to get ahead. I'm just thankful that you're all here in Really, I, I, I think about it sometimes, it touches my heart because I have a dream and you guys are sharing that dream with me. And I can't tell you what that means to me. And you already talked about it in the international seminar. It's a gift and it's a burden. And uh, when somebody comes in, you have a great gift to be able to help them. You also have a burden to help them. If you write them a prescription and send them physical therapy, there's really no burden there, but there's no gift. The greater the gift, the greater the burden. And uh, we're all replaceable, but, but as physicians, giving out prescriptions in particular, we are so replaceable that most of the time they hire PAs to do our jobs. But when it comes to people like you're seeing here, <coughs> all of you can help them. And that's the burden. And now that you are all aware of this, that becomes your personal burden. And when a patient comes in and you think, you know, I could help that person, but I'm not going to, then Hopefully you'll feel guilty about that. Uh, I have a colleague in Bangor, and he came up to me and he said, Hey Steve, I've got this lady, she's got a trigger band right in her forearm. I've been hurting for, for a month. What do you think I should do? So treat it. <laughs> <laughs> treat it. <laughs> Pretty obvious, isn't it? Said, yeah, 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 sounds like a good idea. About two hours later, it's five o'clock. I say, hey Gary, how'd it go with that trigger band lady? He said, oh, I, I, I didn't treat it. I said, you didn't, what'd you do? I put a cast on it. Oh, what? So you put a cast on it? Man, Why it did you do that? I said, it's too late in the day to be a hero. Yeah. And that, he's an honest guy in his own way. It was too late in the day to be a hero. Because you know, you have the, your assistant put the cast on, you make a couple hundred bucks, get the patient out the door, you don't have to listen to a complaint. I mean, you can leave that cast on six weeks or so before you see her again. And uh, you don't have to worry about it. I've been in a cast, I can tell you, a cast isn't that great. He knew the diagnosis, but he didn't do the treatment. She came back in six weeks. She still had the same problem. So I think it's never too late in the day to be a hero. And I think you can be a hero in your office every day. And that's what makes medicine fun. We knew Dr. Tipaldis as a fellow physician, a visionary, a leader, an educator, a mentor, and friend. He touched all of our lives in ways we are still only beginning to comprehend. He has left a legacy in the facial distortion model. He has impacted us individually as an association, a coma, and the osteopathic profession as a whole. In the words of Philip Shettle, DO, immediate past president of the AOA, the osteopathic profession as a whole has lost a valuable contributor a revolutionary practitioner, and a remarkable man. He will truly be missed, but his work and legacy will be carried on by those he invested in.